This trail near the San Pedro River has special significance for Arizonans. To start with, Coronado in 1540 led an expedition along this trail and he brought a herd of cattle into Arizona. It was a rough trip. The Spaniards didn't know how to prepare for such an arid climate and they lost a lot of cattle along the way. Still today, Arizona's dry climate presents special challenges. Hi, I'm Rex Allen, and like most cowboys, I have a special appreciation for Mother Nature, and especially for water. Water is essential for livestock, and by the same token, the cattle industry is essential for Arizona. Most Arizonans these days could be called city slickers. So tell you what, why don't you city slickers take a break for a few minutes and let me take you on a trip away from the city and into Arizona's cattle country. After Coronado left, it took more than a century for Europeans to come back to the San Pedro River Valley. And leading the way this time was a Jesuit priest, Father Eusebio Francisco Quino. He dedicated his life to helping the Indians, often giving them longhorn cattle. He couldn't have known it at the time, but by bringing these longhorns from Mexico, he was helping start Arizona's cattle industry. Arizona was one of the first places in the nation to start cattle ranching. In fact, cowboys have been herding cattle here for over 300 years. The legend of the cowboy in the United States and in Arizona is so great that one historian said that if he hadn't have been, that the American people would have, have invented him and the legend in Levi's. Certainly the cowboy has made a furrow in American history and in Arizona history that will never be plowed under. In 1912, the year Arizona became a state, Wilcox called itself the cattle capital of the nation. Things have changed over the years in this old town, but the cattle business is still very important. And the family ranching tradition is alive and well in Wilcox on the Oak Ranch run by Billy Riggs and his son Clay. Well, it's just, just my whole life. I'll, I'll just soon die right out here as any place. I'll never retire as long as I'm physically able to get out and go either horseback or on my four-wheeler and work with the, the grasses, the livestock, and uh, it, it's as near a perfect life as I know of anywhere. The ranch is important to Billy Riggs, and he wants to make sure the land and the lifestyle are there for future generations. It's a learning school where I'll always be a student. Uh, we continually learn new methods, new ways to improve our grass, improve the range, improve the quality for game, wildlife. I think we have improved our water quality with more grass. We have less runoff, less sediment erosion. It's just a school all the time. Farmers and ranchers have always worked to improve and conserve our water supplies. And thanks to the Native Americans in these parts, we got a head start. When the Spaniards arrived, they found the Hohokam Indians hard at work. They had been farming cotton in the Arizona desert for a thousand years, using a sophisticated system of canals to irrigate their crops. These canals are the foundation of our modern agricultural irrigation system. But irrigation is just a part of the picture. You also have to protect the riparian areas, the land that's next to lakes and streams. Ranchers depend on riparian areas to provide forage, and they make sure the cattle don't abuse them. You can't afford to harm something you need for survival. To re re repair a riparian area is easy. Because it's irrigated all the time, it comes back very quickly. And all it is is good grazing management. The creek, as a result, has gone from maybe 200 foot wide to just, just flat 
barren sand, nothing grows on, to in this place it's only maybe 50 foot wide. And then there's also places it's gone down to just two or three feet wide. And that is what the creek used to look like naturally over 100 years ago. Phil Knight is just one of the thousands of concerned ranchers who live and work throughout rural Arizona. Beef is big business, but it's made up mostly of small business owners. Collectively, they manage over 900,000 head of cattle. Arizona's cattle industry sends enough beef to the supermarket to feed 4.6 million people a year. All in all, the cattle industry is the largest single component of Arizona's agricultural business. The cattle industry in the state of Arizona is growing. And what we found was that the cattle ranching industry contributes something like $500 million a year in receipts. And if we add the dairy industry, there's another $200 million a year. So it's very easy to see why this is one of the larger industries in the state of Arizona and has a direct and significant impact upon our state's economy. There are approximately uh, 111,000 cows, milk cows in the state of Arizona, and approximately 33% uh, of those cows are, are called out of our herds every year that go for beef. And it's very important to us that 10% uh, that of our income uh, derives from the beef industry, and so we're really looking forward to a lot of future growth, both for the beef and for the dairy industry. That growth will help every one of us. The cattle industry pays over $30 million in taxes each year here in Arizona, and the industry is especially important in rural towns. What would rural Arizona be like without the cattle industry? Well, every year you'd have 96,000 fewer visits to rural cafes, 31,000 fewer purchases in clothing stores, 93,000 fewer trips to gas stations, and 48,000 fewer transactions in local banks. And then you have Arizona's feedlots. The Arizona Cattle Feeders Association is the oldest such organization in the U.S., formed in 1934. Today's Arizona cattle feeding industry is the eighth largest in the nation finishing over 500,000 head of cattle a year. And new opportunities are opening with our neighbors to the south. With the NAFTA, it allows the Mexican ranchers and the Mexican producers, producers being the packers, to acquire American cattle and pay no additional taxes or tariffs to import them into Mexico. We also have been able to offer the ranchers in that area an alternative market due to the lower cost of feeding because of the volume that we do here. The cattle industry does provide a strong economic base for Arizona, but there are many other ways ranchers help improve our quality of life. Each year, Arizona ranchers spend over $18 million to improve our public rangelands, bringing in water and providing habitat for wildlife. Ranchers also pay millions of dollars a year in grazing fees. The fourth of these fees return to the county of origin, helping pay for public schools and roads. Ranchers are proud of these investments. They help our state, and they help the land. According to the BLM, western rangelands are in the best shape they've been in for over a hundred years. We're definitely making an impact. Ten years ago, we're up on this heavy red clay mesa, and this was pretty much bare, just bare ground. So we've probably had 5,000% increase in plants. Many Arizona ranchers practice holistic resource management, and Rookie Jelks is one of them. Now, holistic is a modern buzzword that sounds complicated, but the idea is simple. Holistic management is looking at the environment as a whole. There's only one ecosystem, and all the rest of it is just the different parts of the whole ecosystem. So we're working with the whole, managing from microbacteria to bovines to wild animals. So flies and insects and, 
and all that's out there is all part of the whole. Rotational grazing is one of the tools used in holistic management. You divide the land into smaller pastures and rotate your cattle more often. This gives the land time to rest and the plants time to grow. Holistic resource management also helps wildlife. Here in Arizona, wildlife and livestock not only coexist, they prosper. According to the Arizona Game and Fish Department, Arizona's bighorn sheep population has grown 110%. The elk population is up 158%. And white-tailed deer, 167%. Now, ranchers can't claim all the credit for the resurgence of wildlife, but they know they've made a difference. All the wildlife, all the critters that are out here are very dependent upon water resources. Water has been provided in the Sonoran Desert by a number of means. Uh, livestock operators have created water in order to facilitate their operations. The Game and Fish Department has also created water sources from catchments. It's important to have cooperation between livestock interests and wildlife interests. Wildlife uh, related recreation uh, means great amounts of, of money in the coffers of the state. Um, and that would not at all be possible without, uh, without continuing cooperation between livestock interests and wildlife interests. Ranchers are important to public lands, and public lands are important to ranchers. In Arizona, like other western states, there just isn't enough private land to support agriculture. Why, only 17% of the land in Arizona is privately owned. Ranchers understand the need to take care of all our public lands. If you don't take care of the land today, the land won't take care of future generations. And here's something else we strongly believe in, making things better for the consumer. Well, beef producers like consumers are concerned about fat in the diet. And so since the 1950s, beef has actually decreased in fat by about 27%, making the cuts leaner and leaner for the consumer. So now you can have a very lean cut of beef if you're looking for a diet low in fat and still stay within your dietary guidelines. Today's consumer demands a quality product, a product that fits with a busy, health-conscious lifestyle, a product they can trust. Well, the consumer benefits in two ways, uh, primarily through economics and, and food safety issues. Uh, the product will become less expensive to them as we remove defects in our processing uh, and production of the livestock. So, and secondly, they will, they will benefit by being assured that the product we produce is safe and that we will continue producing the safest meat product in the world. The Arizona Cattle Growers Association is proud of the cattle industry's contributions to our state. The association was founded in 1904, and its pioneer members survived outlaws, drought, and occasional floods. But they did more than survive. They became leaders, helping Arizona grow and prosper through the 1900. And now, just ahead, is the turn of another century. Well, this old cowboy can't begin to imagine what Arizona will look like 10 or 20 years from now. But I do know one thing, the cattle industry will be here, contributing to Arizona's economy and quality of life. Ranchers are proud of our past, and we're working hard to assure a bright future for Arizona.